Okay, here we are, post-trib moment number 51, another lie from the liar. Today I want to talk about the day of the Lord. Now, the day of the Lord is a very important concept in Scripture, and I would strongly encourage anybody who cares at all about Bible prophecy to look up every single time the term day of the Lord is used in the Bible. I'm just going to read you one example, but you really need to look up all of the occurrences of the day of the Lord in both Old and New Testament. Let me read you one in verse 20 of Acts chapter 2. The Bible reads, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. Now, who was being spoken to there in the book of Acts? The Jews. Okay, Jewish disciples speaking to the nation of Israel. That's what's going on there. They weren't speaking to Gentiles. Okay, you did not have Gentile Christians preaching that. It was the Jews. Why? Because God was dealing with the nation of Israel at that point in time. That's why they were preaching the second coming. All right. When the nation of Israel rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah, then that time was put off for a while. Okay, the church age came in where both Jew and Gentile could be saved, and now you have a problem because you have a new thing there, the body of Christ, with Jew and Gentile, that are sealed under the day of redemption, and that body of Christ has to be removed before this time period, this time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, that's what the pre-trib rapture is all about. Again, he's not proving anything here. But let's continue. Now, when you're studying the day of the Lord, you'll notice that over and over again, the thing that is emphasized in both Old and New Testament is the sun and moon being dark. Those are the main signs in heaven uh, that have to do with the day of the Lord. You say, what is the day of the Lord? Well, if you study it throughout the Old Testament, it's very clearly the day when God pours out his wrath upon this earth. The day of the Lord is a day of clouds and of thick darkness. It's a day of wrath. It's a day of punishment. It's a day of judgment upon the earth. It's a day when God's going to pour out uh, his wrath in a way that, that he's never done before. I mean, it's Okay, and uh, I don't know if he's trying to say that it's a 24-hour day or not. But let me just show you something here. Matthew chapter 24, the infamous Matthew 24. Um... And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. It's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation, which he does not believe in. He tries to say that the body of Christ goes through the first part, and then the second coming, and everything, all this happens, the day of the Lord happens, and then there's another time period that comes after that, that's God's wrath being poured out. I don't know anybody that teaches that. I mean, this is just satanic heresy. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a great and dreadful day of the Lord, the Bible says. And it's always associated with the sun and moon being darkened. You say, what does this have to do with the rapture? Well, the Bible calls the day that the rapture takes place. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, the Bible calls it the day of the Lord. And wrong. He lied. Let's look at the passage. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 through 18. There you have the rapture. Okay. Do you see anything in there about the day of the Lord? No. Now see, what he does here, what Paul does is, he says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. The times and the seasons of what? The time when these end times will come. That's what he's talking about there. The times and the seasons of the end times. When the rapture will come. Okay. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. He's talking about the second coming there. That doesn't mean that the rapture and the second coming are the same event. That's not what he's saying. He's simply saying that this time that's coming. This time of the outpouring of God's wrath is what's going to come. And they know about that. But again, he's revealing things to them that are a mystery to most people. Okay, that's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, let's go over here. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, here you have him, he begins to speak about the rapture. And he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Now, I've been over this thing over and over and over again, but the second coming of Jesus Christ is not in the twinkling of an eye. It is not in a moment. Okay? In other words, the twinkling of an eye is like the blinking your eye. That quick. Just like this. Boom. And it's done. Well, wait a second. If this is the second coming and you see the moon and the sun being darkened and the stars of heaven falling to the earth, um, would that be in a moment the twinkling of an eye? No. We're reading about something else here. That's why Paul calls it a mystery. Okay? So you go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You have these same events being talked about. Okay, again, the trump of God, the dead in Christ rising first. Where's the dead in Christ rising in Matthew chapter 24? It's not in there. And then he says, okay, now the times when this is going to happen, I'm sorry, chapter 5, the times when this is going to happen, in other words, the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. He's saying, not that the rapture is the day of the Lord. He's simply saying the day of the Lord, the second coming, the end times. You know about that. But I'm telling you about something different here. That's what's going on. I mean, you have to be a blind fool to not understand this, you know, like this guy here, and, and teach this. Okay, I shouldn't say a blind fool to not understand it, because there are some people that don't understand, and they, they aren't foolish. Okay, they're just ignorant of it. They don't know. They've never heard proper preaching on this subject. They just listen to this liar. Uh, very clearly, he says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, well, first he says in verse 1, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, referring to the rapture that he just mentioned in, in chapter 4, mm -hmm. but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So he, he, he connects the timing of the day of the Lord with the timing of the rapture. Yeah, yeah, the end times. You say, why is that? Well... Because they both happen on the same day. No, they don't. You see how he lied? I mean, this guy is just a perpetual liar. They do not happen on the same day. They cannot happen on the same day, as I have already showed you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. The trump of God appears only two times in your King James Bible. Once here in 1 Thessalonians 4, the other in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's not the same thing. Okay, I've been over this thing over and over and over again. The dead in Christ rising first. Where is it at in Matthew chapter 24? It's not in there. You will not see a resurrection of dead saints that are in Christ. Nobody was even in Christ when Jesus was speaking in Matthew chapter 24. He hadn't even died on the cross yet. You know, he's just, this guy is just such a liar. All right? It's a mysterious in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Boom. It happens just like that. That would not be true if you see the sun and the moon being darkened and the stars falling from heaven. That's not going to happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Compare Scripture with Scripture. Again, he is lying. 